Right now we're joined uh, by someone who testified before the January 6th federal grand jury. Mark Short, the former chief of staff to then Vice President Mike Pence, is here with me in the Situation Room. Mark, thanks very much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. So let me get your thoughts on this Friday hearing that the judge has now set this coming Friday. Uh, she's obviously concerned, according to her document, that Trump's social media posts, his social media posts, could have what, what, the, uh, what, the, uh, what, what is called a harmful, chilling effect on witnesses. This is the prosecutor's uh, argument that Trump's uh, social media posts could have a harmful, chilling effect on witnesses. That presumably would include your former boss, the former vice president. Uh, perhaps, uh, Wolf. I, I think, you know, I'm not so sure that uh, there'd be a chilling impact. I think that when you've had a mob descend upon you in the Capitol and you uphold your oath to the Constitution, you're probably not too worried about any social media posts at this point. Trump continues to rail against what's going on right now, the potential restrictions that, that are being imposed, he believes, on Truth Social, the social media site. He wrote that uh, that would make him, quote, and, and I'm quoting him now, the only politician in American history not allowed to speak. What do you make of this free speech argument he's putting out there? Well, I think it's interesting because it seems to me there's two arguments and it's got to be one or the other. Whereas the president, former president, makes the argument that the election was stolen. I never had a chance to present my evidence. But his chief uh, lawyer has been out on the TV show saying, look, it's a First Amendment right to mislead the American people. If you're going to prosecute my client, then you have to prosecute all sorts of congressmen who mislead the American people constantly. And so I think then the question is, well, which is it? Is it that he has a First Amendment protection to misrepresent events to the American people? Or is it, no, it really was stolen and everything I have evidence to prove it, and I'm going to present that in court? I want you to listen to what he said just a little while ago out on the campaign trail. This is Trump mm -hmm. on the campaign trail in New Hampshire. Listen to this. Sure. I'm sorry, I won't be able to go to Iowa today. I won't be able to go to New Hampshire today because I'm sitting in a courtroom on bullshit because his attorney general charged me with something. What's your reaction to that? Well, you know, Wolf, I'm somewhat sympathetic to it. I do think that there is a question of whether or not, you know, even his own lawyer this weekend said that uh, it wasn't criminal. What it was was a technical violation of the Constitution. Well, what do you call a technical violation of the Constitution, Wolf? I call it unconstitutional. And so if basically... There the, are restrictions if, on free if, speech, as you know. If the, if the chief lawyer for the president is more or less acknowledging that his request to the vice president was unconstitutional, then I think that's an incredible breakthrough that they're acknowledging at this point. And so, um, look, I, I think that there are First Amendment protections, but I, I, I think when you're making the argument that, hey, look, it was an unconstitutional act, but it's not a criminal one, I think it's, um, it's one that I think even the vice president has made the case to say, I don't know that it was criminal, I just know it was wrong. The former vice president, and you work for him, uh, you know him well, uh, uh, he, will t uh, he, he presumably will testify if subpoenaed, right? I think he's mentioned that uh, he's always complied with the law, and if compelled by law, then he will follow the law. I want you to listen to what one of Trump's attorneys uh, is now describing as that possibility. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. If you look at Mike Pence's words and what he said time and time again, it actually um, supports Donald Trump. It's actually, I think, Mike Pence, uh, if this ever goes to trial, and I don't think it should make it to trial, I think it should be dismissed. But if it ever does make it to trial, um, Mike Pence is going to be a, a star witness for Donald Trump. You think he's right? That Mike Pence will be a star witness for Donald Trump? Well, again, I think that there's, uh, they've been saying two different things because the president himself this weekend refuted the notion that he ever said that Mike Pence was too honest and more or less castigated him as, as misrepresenting the facts. Yet his attorneys are saying Mike Pence will be a great witness because he's honest and he chronicled everything that transpired around January 6th. So it seems they're continuing to, um, to have messages that are conflicting. You know, I, I thought it was interesting because Pence says he will sign the debate uh, loyalty pledge to support the eventual Republican presidential nominee. Uh, but I want you to listen to something that the former vice president told Ardana Bash last Sunday. Listen to this. But the American people deserve to know that President Trump, you know, asked me to put him over my oath to the Constitution, but I kept my oath and I always will. And I'm running for president in part because I think anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. So how does he justify a, a loyalty pledge to support the Republican presidential nominee? And by all accounts, Trump is way, way ahead. 
Well, I think um, throughout Mike Pence's professional career, he's been a Republican, unlike Donald Trump. And so I think that, you know, he, he's always been loyal to the Republican Party. I think that he's acknowledging he'll sign that pledge. But I think it's important to understand he's running for president against Donald Trump because he thinks he would be a better presidential candidate and a better president of the United States. But he said, and I'm quoting him now, anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. And he says... Trump keeps putting himself over the Constitution. It's why he's running, one, partly why he's running for president, as well as believing that Donald Trump has walked away from so many of the conservative policies that were part of the legacy, whether or not that's on life or spending on foreign policy, Wolf. I want you to also listen to what uh, retired General Keith Kellogg, as you know, he served as Pence's national security advisor, uh, just put out in a statement. Let me read a couple sentences from the statement. You know him well, uh, Keith Kellogg. Pence has often chosen the passive route, avoiding confrontation. This lack of assertiveness, combined with an over-reliance on failed political consultants like Mark Short, has demonstrated a laissez-faire leadership style unworthy of the presidency. What's your reaction to uh, uh, Kellogg? Well, Wolf, um, it's saddened to read that. I, I don't want to denigrate anybody who has served our country in uniform in combat like Keith has. Uh, but at the same time, I think Keith has just recently boasted that he nominated Mike Pence for the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which I don't think is consistent with his comments of him lacking leadership skills. I also know there were a lot of young men and women on our staff who stood at their post on January 6th. Unfortunately, Keith was not one of them. Keith was at the rally at the time that the United States Secret Service evacuated the vice president. The vice president's national security advisor was down on the rally encouraging people to march on the Capitol. So he did not stand his post. And, you know, I did bring a receipt tonight because this is an email that I got from Keith on January 6th and the evening of January 6th, in which he said, the president is up in the residence. I recommend you stay on the Hill and finish the Electoral College issue tonight. I responded, that's our plan. And he said, that's not a good plan. That's a great plan. Close this thing out tonight. So... On January 6th, Keith was clearly supporting the vice president's actions. I know that he's still on Donald Trump's payroll, and perhaps that's why he's saying something different that's today. That's a pretty serious charge you're making right now. I think that his comments, you know, are very inconsistent with everything he said about Mike Pence and also in private to Mike Pence in the two years since January 6th. All right. We'll follow up uh, with General Kellogg, see what else he has to say. Thanks very much, Thank Mark, you, for, for Thanks joining for us. Me.